What's up guys, today we're having a look at Jet Blaster's new Close Engagement Dart Assault, also known as Cedar. As the name would suggest, I think it's more of a CQB blaster than the Exus 2. It's a lot smaller and from my testing it's not quite as powerful. The core design element of Cedar is that it's a completely toolless blaster. You don't need to use a screwdriver to perform maintenance or to swap out the internals. The shell opens up by pulling out two pins these pins seem to work very well in holding the shell together, and I haven't experienced any looseness between the two halves. Immediately accessible is the plunger assembly, which with a little prying apart of the shell, pops right out. This would allow you to apply a lubricant, change your spring, change the o-ring, which is something I'll discuss later. The bolt sled attaches to the shotgun grip using one thumb screw on either side. Simply line the thumb screws up with the holes on the bolt sled and screw them in to secure it. The breech is what I'd call hot swappable. By this I mean you can completely remove your breech and barrel, clean them or swap them between Omni, Alpha or Omega which is scheduled to release in the next few months. To remove your breech and barrel, simply push down on this white tab and simultaneously push your barrel from the front of the blaster inwards. To reinstall, make sure you align this bump with the catch as you push it in. Cedar comes pre-installed with Omni RT and a 6kg spring. This performs between 60 feet per second and 100 feet per second depending on the type of darts you use. Personally, I'm finding that full length darts actually hit a high of the 90s more than the half lengths do. Now, Jet shows this setup out of the box to meet international safety standards, but for all you modders and tinkerers out there, Alpha and Omega RT are not that far away, and Jet also have a whole lineup of springs coming in the near future, ranging from 4kg up to at least 16, possibly higher. Earlier, I mentioned changing the O-ring. Cedar actually comes with two O-rings. The black one is installed by default, and it's more tailored to the Omni kit. Low spring loads and a loose barrel fit. However, in your included spare parts bag, there's a red O-ring. For modders who plan to use sealed breeches, higher springs and tighter barrels, I think you'll find this o-ring preferable. I've watched some other reviews of Cedar, and one of the things that comes up a lot is the pump grip comfort. It lacks a rear hand stop, but on mine I naturally rest two of my fingers on the front of the grip, same as I do on my 16kg long shot. It makes it much easier to prime and seems comfortable to me. However, if you look on the Cedar's box, you'll notice an easter egg in the form of this unreleased pump grip. It features 20mm Picatinny railing at the bottom, so you could attach a vertical grip if that's your preference. You could also put rubber Picatinny covers on the rails for extra grip. Some extra things about the shell. The stock wobbles pretty badly. It's also a pain to remove. You push this tiny tab downward and try to pull, but I find this impossible to remove without giving it a run up and being very forceful about it. The buffer tube does accept other stocks though, and this worker stock is very secure on there. No wobble like jet stock, so I don't think it's an issue with Cedar's buffer tube, just the stock itself. Cedar features a full 20mm Picatinny top rail, which allows you to add optics, torches, sling points, whatever you can think of. And finally, to address something I saw in Sykes' video, the shotgun grip does rub on the shell. I don't know if you can see it, but there's some small amounts of plastic dust which is being rubbed off by the shotgun grip. However, I think this is pretty normal for external shotgun grips. My worker prophecy with the Honey Badger kit does this much worse than the Cedar, but that's probably due to the vertical grip being metal, not plastic. Now that's enough about the stock Cedar configuration, let's modify it. A quick warning before I do anything else, Jet Blaster have informed me that using third party parts in Cedar could void your warranty with them, so if you're worried about breaking something and not getting it replaced, 
I'd wait for Jet's own mod parts to come out in the next few months. First up, let's install a third party breach. For my example, I'll be using a worker prophecy breach. Now, this is where Cedar's toolless design falls apart. Though, to be fair, Jet designed Cedar to be used with Jet parts. To install a third party breach, you only need the receiver half of Cedar. First, remove the shotgun grip. Undo the thumb screws and slide the grip forward out of the shell. Now undo all of the screws. Swap the white cedar dart gate for your third putty dart gate and install your barrel if you haven't already. Something of note, the screws cedar's dart gate uses were too wide to fit into my worker dart gate. You'll need to use the screws that come with the third putty kit. Close your receiver back up. Reinstall the shotgun grip by tightening the thumb screws into your prepared bolt sled. Today I'll be installing a 12.8 kilogram turf retaliator spring. This one has a yellow label on it. I believe there's an older green label one which doesn't seem to work according to some posts that I've seen online. And again, I'd like to warn you that using third party parts will void your warranty. That includes springs, but Jet have their own springs coming soon. With the worker kit and the 128 kilogram turf retaliator spring, I was hitting velocities around the 150 to 170 range. This seems to confirm my suspicions that Seed is going to be more of your close range blaster compared to the Exus 2, which would be your longer range blaster. But we'll have to wait and see how Alpha RT and Omega RT perform. In conclusion, Cedar has a lot of room for customization. In the next few months, Jet have a whole lineup of springs coming. They have a clear polycarb Alpha RT kit coming, a fully metal Omega RT kit, and a second option for your shotgun grip featuring that bottom Picatinny rail, as well as many other things to come. After my testing with the worker kit, will I be using that in mine for the short term? Probably not. A downside to the worker kit is the barrel's too short to add a blaster tech scar. That's the exact issue that I only just solved on my prophecy with the Honey Badger kit. I did manage to install a worker rifled barrel by removing Cedar's faux barrel, but the performance is not ideal in comparison. I've also been appointed as a product tester for Jet, so I'm sure I'll be getting some prototypes to play around with in my personal Cedar, but if I didn't have this privilege I would either build a brass sleeper breech like UK Foam has, or simply wait for Jet's kits. They're only a few months away. As always, thanks for watching, if you liked my review and overview, please leave a like or a comment and I'll see you on the next one.